Hi, this is the video about the analysis of the features of a bivariate data plot. So the features are known by the acronym TARSOG. So I've got six different features that we're looking for in a bivariate plot. We've got the trend, we've got the association, also called the direction. We've got the relationship, which is also called the strength. We've got the scatter, we've got the outliers, which is also called the unusual values. And then we've got the groupings. So for a start, trend is either going to be linear or non-linear. Linear means that the data points follow a straight line. The trend is in a straight line. Non-linear means that we can't fit a straight line to the data points. So here we've got a much curved, more curved line. The direction or the association is either going to be positive or negative. Positive means from left to right that the data points go upwards and negative means from left to right the data points are going downwards. The strength of the relationship can be described as either strong, moderate or weak. So strong means the data points are close to the line of best fit, moderate means they're a little bit further away to the line of best fit, and weak means the data points um, still follow a line of best fit but they're quite a lot further away. So the strength of the relationship is how close they are to the line of best fit. It doesn't relate to the steepness of the line of best fit. So it can still be strong but not very steep. Scatter is about the consistency of the scatter. It's either going to be consistent or non-consistent. So on the first graph, it doesn't really matter what value of explanatory variable we've got. The scatter is going to be around about the same. So there's the same amount of variation at high levels or low levels. Whereas on this graph, at the low levels of explanatory variable, there's not very much uh, variation or scatter, but as the explanatory variable increases, then the variation or the scatter in, uh, increases. So this is a non-consistent scatter, whereas this is consistent. Outliers. So there's two reasons why we'd have an outlier. One is this data point uh, follows the trend, but it's away from the other data points. And this data point, the first data point, um, if the trend line was here, this data point's away from the trend. So it's either separate from the data or away from the trend. And the last feature is groups. So groups generally um, show a characteristic or a category within the data. So we may have males and females or some other category that's going to mean that the values are different within the data. It doesn't necessarily need to be groups uh, like this. It may be one line and then another line above it. So it just means there might be more than one relationship within the data. So we'll go through some examples here. So we've got marathon time versus stride length. So is the trend linear or non-linear? So what we're asking is, does it follow a straight line? And so if we put a line of best fit in, as we increase the stride length, so we're increasing the stride length by about uh, 20 centimeters there, and we've got a decrease in marathon time of about 40 minutes. And every time we increase the stride length, we get the same uh, constant uh, decrease in marathon time. So in the sample, there is a linear trend between the stride length and marathon time, because as stride length increases, there tends to be a constant decrease in marathon time. So I'll just give you another example here. So here we've got um, open road miles per gallon and we've got engine size. So is this trend linear or non-linear? So if we put a trend line on for a start, it drops much more quickly at the beginning. So as the engine size um, increases for a start, the miles per gallon drops quite a lot. But then as the engine sizes are larger, then the miles per gallon isn't dropping by the same rate. So because as engine size increases, there tends to be a non-constant decrease in the open road miles per gallon, we're going to say this is a, a non-linear trend. So fitting a line of best fit in a line is not going to be the best for this one. We're better off to fit a curve. So this is non-linear. Non Going back to our marathon time uh, versus stride length, is the association positive or negative? We're going to say that we notice a negative association between the stride length and marathon time. 
because as the stride length increases marathon time tends to decrease so stride length down here at um, a meter 10 um, tends to have a marathon time up here of around about the 330 minutes whereas as the stride length increases so we're at 180 then we'd expect about 200 minutes marathon time this is supported by stride length having a negative coefficient so the coefficient is the number that stride length is multiplied by because this is a negative number this supports the fact this is a negative coefficient if this was a sorry that supports the fact that it's a negative um, association if this was a positive number we'd expect the data points to go up from left to right and we'd expect a positive association the next question is it a strong moderate or weak relationship so when I look at this I'm looking at how close those dots uh, to the line of best fit so I've noticed a strong relationship between stride length and marathon time because the dots are quite close or very close this is supported by the R value so this R value up here is uh, 0 0.91 so we can look at the, the R value the higher the R value or the absolute R value so we ignore the minus sign then the stronger the uh, relationship this is just a guide so um, you're best to be visually looking at the graph and using that as your first point of call and then the R value supports what you see so just as a guide so the range of R values ignoring the positive or negative um, we've got a 0 0.91 so that's really close to the strong uh, range uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 we'll consider weak 0.5 up to 0.7 maybe moderate and 0.7 to 1 strong again that's just a guide and the visual inspection of the graph should be preferred over using the R value last one we want to identify this outlier so we've got an outlier down here so we've noticed this outlier it's a person their stride length is 165 and their marathon time is 155 this person has a much lower marathon time than what you'd expect with a person of that stride length so if I had a stride length of 165 I'd expect my marathon time to be up here at around about 220 so this person here's marathon time is much um, less than what I'd expect of a person with that stride length okay so what I want you to do now is pause the video and I want you to try and find the trend the association the relationship and identify that outlier so pause the video and I'm going to start now so hopefully you've paused the video and had a go yourself so the trend I thought was linear because as height increases there tends to be a constant increase in weight so as we increase height weight tends to uh, go up in a line so linear relationship we think it's a positive association because as height increases weight tends to increase this is supported by the positive coefficient of height next one relationship so we think there's a strong relationship that's if the dots are really quite close when I look at this graph when I'll when I remove this we'll we'll go back and have a look at that but this is supported so the the R value is 0.78 um, I wouldn't mind if you said this one was a moderate but it's somewhere between moderate to strong and the outlier is the last one up there so the outlier has a height of 189 and it has a weight of 123 so this person is much um, heavier than what you'd expect somebody of that height to be if I had an athlete and they weigh, they had a height of 189 I would expect their weight about 85 kilograms whereas this person is 123 so that's all the features just brought up again so there's one more for you to do again I'd like you to pause the video and have a look at the trend association relationship the outlier and there's one more I want you to have a look at for this one which is the scatter okay hopefully you've had a go by yourself so we'll start off at the trend now the trend I thought was non-linear in this one 
because it starts off when the the weight of the diamond is lower the relationship is a bit flatter and as the weight increases the relationship tends to get steeper so if I put a line of best fit that helps uh, see that so we've got a, a shallower gradient here and a steeper gradient there so we think that as weight increases there's a non-constant increase in the diamonds price next one the association we think that as weight increases so as the weight increases the price tends to increase um, this will lead to a positive association and it's supported by the positive coefficient of weight I think the relationships quite strong the dots are quite close to the line of best fit this is supported by the quite high R value um, when I have a look at it though I think that for a start when the weight is low then the relationship is strong but as the weight increases the relationship gets weaker identify the outlier so we've got an outlier up here it weighs uh, 1.05 carats and it has a price of 11,200 US dollars so this price is much more than what I'd expect of a diamond that weighs uh, that amount of carats what we're probably seeing here is we're probably seeing that there's other variables other than just the weight that affect the the value of the diamond possibly its clarity or other things like that now the last one is scatter so if I have a look at the line of best fit I can see that the scatter starts off uh, quite small and then as it increases the scatter gets more so the variation in price starts off low when the weight is low but as the weight increases the variation is increasing so we've got a non-constant scatter and because as weight increases the variation tends to increase so again I'll just put all of those up and um, that's that there was one thing I wanted to do so I'm going to bring up 